yourself to God. The Bible says in the book of Job that the sons of God gathered themselves to present themselves to God. Then Aquinas who came among them. Or Satan came among them. But that's not the emphasis. But they gathered and presented themselves to God. You need to be conscious of where you are. Most people miss out of what God is doing because they are not conscious of the fact that God is present. And so you allow things to distract you. You allow somebody to talk to you. You allow, just miss what God is doing. But if you are conscious of the presence of God and you are conscious of the fact that you are in His presence, then He will minister to you. Remember, God is a spirit. Amen? He sees you. He sees your heart. If your heart is not open to him, he can't enter. But if you come with that desire for him to, to reach out to you, to touch you, and you present yourself to him, he will take you the way you present yourself to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because no man leaves God's presence the same way they came, if they truly came into God's presence. You come into God's presence, you can't leave the same way you came. Because God knows you, and God always I mean, we don't use the word, God always do a work of repairing whenever we are in his presence. Because while you are out there, you are being bashed. There are all manner of negativity. The enemy does things against you and you are in a warfare and it's like you have a man of like a car who gets bashed you know, from the back side and all that and then you come to the workshop and then the mechanic does a work of repairing. Praise the Lord. That's what God does to whenever we come into his presence. Amen. He said, they that wait upon the Lord. They, they will renew their strength. Why? Because you have spent the strength you have outside. You've used it up. And when you come into his presence, he renews your strength. Because you need strength. Hello, somebody. Oh, the enemy you are up against is not tight. Unfortunately, our enemy does not sleep. I mean, does not slumber. Praise the Lord. Our enemy. They are spirits. It's not just one, there are many. Hello? Because when we say Satan, we think it's one entity. Satan is Satan is a designation given to an entity. Do you understand? Satan is not a name. It's, it's an office. <laughs> the office of Satan. Praise the Lord. So Satan simply means opposer, adversary, or somebody that, that resists. That's a Satan. And we have many Satans. And these Satans we are talking about their spirits. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And if you are not on your guard, and if you don't know what to do, they will keep taking advantage of your life every now and then. But I want us to be conscious of the God that we are connected to. Amen. Amen. God wants every one of us to have a victorious life over all the onslaught of the powers of darkness. But most importantly, he wants us to be well connected to him. Last week we talked about the fact that God is the eternal constant. And you have to connect with him and agree with him and do his will. You are not in this world to do your own thing. Amen. Amen. That's not why you are here. Some people think they have their life to live. No, you don't have your life to live because the life you have is not your own in the first place. Amen? Amen. Do you know how you got here? No, Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you don't know how you got here, so what, what makes you think that you know what to do? <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Amen. No. We are not here to do our thing. We are meant to do this thing. And I love what Pastor Stephen said just now. God will ask you, what did you do to advance my kingdom? Because the greatest desire of most people in the, in, in the world today is to have a better life. And the question is, what is better life, by the way? 
What is better life? Some people feel better life is when you have enough money. And then you go on a vacation, you travel here and there, and just, just enjoy life. Is that what life is about? Amen? Amen. There was one man that tried it in the scripture. Jesus was talking about the parable. Uh, he said in Luke chapter 12, verse 20, 15 or 16, he said, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he had. He said, Beware of covetousness. Because it is covetousness that makes people do. That drive them into possessing things, getting things. They drive, they just want to possess and get things. I told us last week that it is not pursuing money will not make you rich. Praise the Lord. True riches often come by pursuing and seeking riches. True riches come by giving quality service as God intends for you to. I want to believe in my heart that. We celebrate this man today, Bill Gates and probably uh, Elon Musk, all those great men, rich men today. They, their desire was not to make money. Praise the Lord. If you read their biography, their desire was not to make money, but they want to do something that would at least make life easier for people. When you give people things that they need, money will come naturally. But the problem is we are seeking for the things and not for what makes the thing happen. We are seeking for the reward and not the service. Life is really about sowing and reaping. You cannot reap if you are not sown. If you sow service, you will reap. You reap money. Amen to Jesus. Praise the Lord. But you see, you don't put the cart, you don't put the horse or the cart before the horse. You put the horse before the cart. Hallelujah. Amen to Jesus. Let's follow me. I want us to pray this morning, but I want us to do it the right way. God has no problem blessing you. Let me show us a verse of scripture before we go into prayers. We're having an anointing service, we're going to be praying more today. Let's see the book of Psalm 81, verse 10. Psalm 81. Oh, um, all right. Check it out for me. It says that. Um, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Uh, no. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will you withhold from them that walk uprightly. Check it out for me, please. Check out that sun for me. The last time it fall, but it's, it's there. Now, I want you, I just want you to see something here. Thank you. 84. Say, for the Lord God is what? Talk to me. The Lord God is what? A sun. And shield, the Lord will do what? Give you grace. Tell me, but God will give you grace. Amen. And He will glorify you. He said, The Lord will give grace and what? Glory. But look at what He said. They said, No good thing. No good thing. We need to what? Withhold from who? From them that walk uprightly. So, if you want good from God to come to you, don't focus on getting good. Focus on working uprightly with God. That should be the focus. Jesus said, when you seek first the kingdom, these other things will be added. They will come. Why? How? God will give you the idea of what to do. He will show you what to do. He will open your eyes to see what you ought to do to get the things you are looking for. If you spend more time seeking God, those things you are seeking for would have come a long time ago. But the problem is you are spending more time seeking those things and so you miss God. And when you seek those things, you get, it, get, it gets more complicated because life really is complicated. If you are not with God, you, if you are not interfacing with God, you'll be interfacing with other spirits. Listen to this and don't get me wrong. If you are not interfacing with God, you will always by default, interface with other spirits. Man was not created to rule himself alone. You know. Man was created to be influenced by spirits. You may not believe me, but that is a reality. Amen? Man is a vessel. Man was created to be a what? Oh, come on. That means you are created to be a host to spirits. That's the way we are formed and designed. And the only spirit that is meant to operate man is God. But because man sinned, Satan had access into his life. 
And so demons began to pest on him. That's why one man can be possessed with 50,000 demons. One man. And every demon has their own nature and characteristics. Some are possessed with the demon of tea free. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some are possessed with the demon of over talking. They talk too much. Amen. And the things that, that come out of their mouth end up implicating them all the time. Some are possessed with all manner of spirits, immorality, name it. Now, all of these things, you think you're the one doing them. You are being influenced or known to you. That is why when you interface with God and the Spirit of God pervades your life, then He begins to dictate your movement and influence your actions. Hallelujah. Amen. And then He told us in Galatians chapter 5, He said, Look, He said, Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. He said, Because the Spirit lost against the flesh and the flesh against the Spirit. And these two, they are contrary. So that you will not do what you want to do. You cannot be in the middle ever. It is either you are doing God stuff or you are doing the will of the flesh. And Satan and the flesh, they are partners. Hello? Amen. Satan and the flesh, they are what? Amen. Because Satan cannot tempt your spirit, he can only tempt your, fle your flesh. That flesh, the fallen nature that you have, unfortunately, we are trapped in this body. And this body, the flesh, have desires. And the desires of the flesh coincide with the desires of Satan. And so they are always in agreement. And so God expects you every now and then to put your body under huh? Because if you don't do it, Satan will have the upper hand. When a man is fasting and praying, you will notice that he, he lives a sober life. Is that true? Yes. So when you think some of the desires he had before, those negative desires, they, they, will, be, they will be toned down. It will be dead, but the strength will not be, will not overpower the man. Why? Because the flesh the flesh is hungry, or rather the flesh is weak. And as long as the flesh has no food, it has no strength. His voice is not loud. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But if a man decides to eat and over eat, he will definitely that he will start misbehaving. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. It was flesh. Amen. Listen, we are, we are trapped in this body. And that is why each time you interface with God, your flesh come under. And the spirit rests upon you, and you have the strength to overpower the flesh. It will always be there. The only time you'll be free from the flesh is when you die. Hello? Hi. Why am I talking like this this morning? I want us to pray. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I want us to be on the right path. You see, the point is this God has no problem blessing you. No. Amen? He said, I know the thought I think towards you. They are thought of what? Thought of this, a lot of evil thoughts to give you an expected end. Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, what you are thinking and asking from God is too small compared to what God wants to do. Do you understand? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, now unto him that is what? Able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask of him. So what you're asking and seeking for is small compared to what God wants to do. But you need to be in alignment with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your desires are legitimate. Your desire to be great is legitimate. Your desire to be rich and have all the money you want is legitimate. But it has to be within the confines of that which God allows. That is why the first thing to do is to be in alignment with God. Seek first his kingdom. Be right with God. Because God is not just seeking to make your life better. He's seeking to prepare you for something eternal. Hello, somebody. He's not just seeking to make your life better, but to prepare you for something eternal because there's a life after now. Amen. Amen. And you have to be ready for it. Praise the Lord. Amen. My prayer is that God will help us to maintain that connectivity with him so that we don't lose in two sides. Amen? Amen. You don't lose here on earth, and you don't lose over there. Praise God. Amen. If you lose here and gain there, it's better yes. than to gain here and lose over there. And so Jesus said, what shall we profit 
a man. If he gain, uh -huh. and then do what? Lose the soul. Praise the Lord. Let your priorities be right. Now let's see Galatians chapter 5. I have just 10 minutes and then we're going to prayers. Amen. I want us to really pray. All those spirits that have been influencing your life negatively, they will let you go today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 1. It says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. My topic this morning is break free. Tell them about break free. Break free. Tell them say break free. break free. Hallelujah. That's my topic this morning. Be not entangled. Stand fast in the liberty that Christ has made you free and refuse to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Because the yoke of bondage seek to put you in a state and regulate and regiment your life and put and put limitation upon you and put you in a state where you don't have the liberty to live and serve God the way you should serve him. The liberty Jesus gave to us number one was to deliver us from the power of sin. That's the liberty number one, which is the primary thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Salvation is being delivered from the bondage of corruption, the bondage of sin, and then of course deliverance from the judgments to come. Because there's a judgment coming. Whether we like to hear it or not is the reality. It's going to happen. Amen. Amen. So every day of your life you must think about eternity. It's very important. Every day. If you don't think about eternity, you might get influenced by and get overwhelmed by things of life. But it's very important to think about eternity every day. The Bible says examine yourself if you are still in the faith. Otherwise, why are you a Christian? Amen? Amen. Why are you a Christian? Why are you calling upon the name of the Lord? Christianity is not just morality. They teach us moral education in school. Living right, do the right thing, but living right and doing the right thing alone will not save you. It is Jesus that saves. After he has saved you, then do the right thing. Do you understand? Yes. But you see, in the world today, they teach morality, but they put Christ outside of it. Christ is not in it. They tell you don't lie, don't steal. Those are good things. But if Christ is not in the center of it, all those things, they are all self-righteousness. And all the other world religion, that's all they teach. They teach morality. And you will see a Muslim man. Oh my goodness. You will see somebody who <laughs> is not connected to Christ. Amen. Amen. Who will tell you, I'm never stole in my life. I have never slept with another man's wife in my life. I have never slept with another man's wife in my life. They will be boasting on their achievement, self-righteousness. And even you as a Christian, I want them to compare yourself with them and say, ah, this guy is living a better life than myself. He has never smoked, he has never drank. And then you look at your own life, maybe you have drunk and you smoke and you're like, like, this guy is better than me. No, he's not. If he's not born again, he's going to hell. Yes. Amen? Yes. If you have not accepted Christ, he's going to what? So first, Christ. He's the one that brings salvation. If you have him in you, then you know you are connected to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the first thing to do is your connectivity with him. And that's what he came to do. Deliver us from the power and the bondage of sin. Number one. And then number two, he came to deliver us from the works that the enemy has done against our life. He said in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not. But for to what? To steal, to kill, and to what? To destroy. So, but I have come that you may what? Have life. And have it more abundant. The enemy come to bring frustration and bring negativity into your life, but Jesus came to reverse it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the gospel is actually good news. Amen. Amen. Bring you out of darkness into light. <laughs> In darkness, there's confusion. In darkness, there's sickness, there's disease. 
In darkness, there's all manner of negativity in darkness. But in the light, there's liberty. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. And so he's telling us to stand in that liberty. And the truth is that your redemption, your freedom, your lifting is already in Christ Jesus. Now, what you need to do to experience them, you have to enforce them. You enforce it. We are like law enforcement agents. The fact that there's a law that people should not steal does not mean they will not steal. They will still steal. The only time they will stop stealing is when you enforce the law. Hello, somebody. Hi. God said you are the head and not the tail. It doesn't mean you will be the head and not the tail. You have to enforce what God has said in your life. Hello, somebody. Hi. So he said from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom allows violence. And the violent one takes it by force. I refuse to be that. You tell yourself that. When pain comes your way, you shout against the pain. I refuse to be sick. Praise the Lord. It doesn't mean sickness will not come. It will come. But you have to fight it. It's called the fight of faith. It's that fight the good fight of what? The just shall do what? Shall live by faith. Praise God. And so we're going to stand in that liberty. Sin must not have dominion over us. Amen? Amen? And so corruption also must not have dominion over us. Because Jesus came to set us free. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Let's go there quickly. Then we're going to prayers. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Verse 5. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That your faith will not stand in the wisdom and the calculation of men. Let your faith rest on the power of God that is able to deliver and is able to set you free and is able to destroy every yoke that the enemy place in your life. Let your faith be in the power of God. Why? Because with God, all things are what? That yoke will break. That limitation will be destroyed. And every entanglement of setting upon your life will be broken today. In the name of Jesus. In Christ Jesus, there's liberty. We are going to enforce that liberty. Amen. We'll start with sin, then we'll go into the blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to pray this morning that God will bring healing upon you spiritually. Heal your soul and heal your body. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. God has no problem healing people, but we need people to turn to him. Amen. It's a scripture I used to quote those years. I remember when I first gave my life to Christ, I used to hop in in, in the city of Lagos. We have these big buses. We call it Moonway. That's in Lagos. Amen. Now, these buses used to have people packed into them because Lagos was a very crowded city, but it's still a crowded city. And um, from place to place, you see these big buses that can, the seaters are probably like uh, maybe uh, 50 seaters. No, 50 seaters? 60. 60 seaters. But the people that will cram into that vehicle will be more than. Almost 200. All the seats will be full. People will be standing and all will be hanging at the door. Praise the Lord. Very interesting sight. Amen. So usually what I do is I hop into the bus and I start to preach. Alright? I start to preach and then I preach from where I'm going to to where I want to drop when I'm done. I come down and then I go to where I'm going to. So I used to do that. Then on this occasion one day I was preaching and then I was quoting from the book of Isaiah chapter 59 where God says, he said, my, aunt, my hand is not short that I cannot deliver. Neither is my ear heavy that I cannot hear. Hello? Hello? He said, behold, the Lord's hand is not what? Short that it cannot deliver. Neither is what? His ear heavy that it cannot hear. But what is the reason? Verse 2. He said, but your what? Now, is there anything in your life that is preventing God 
from doing what he wants to do. You are going to deal with it today. He said, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have done what? He is faced from you that you will not hear. So if there's anything that is still in you that you are still holding on to, that you are still indulging in, is preventing God from doing what he wants to do. Not that God cannot. But he wants to move. And guess what? Listen, if God visits, two things normally happen. Is he a visit for judgment or for blessing? Whenever he visits, there will be judgment or blessing. Praise the Lord. So if God visits a man and then there's sin in the life of that man, the nature of God cannot, cannot stay with sin. The natural thing that will come from God will be judgment. Do you understand? That's the natural thing that will come from God. When he sees sin, God judges sin. He cannot condone it. That is why every now and then, the privilege we have now is that the blood of Jesus has the capacity to wash away sin. But the blood will not work until you confess it and until you repent of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you do so, then the blood will wash and then God will see you as a clean person. See you as a pure person. And then when you come, he comes to visit with blessing and not judgment. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I was preaching this in the bus one day and then a man looked at me. I didn't have money in my pocket, enough money I put on transport. And the guy paid for my transport said thank you for that message. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I got blessed. End of story. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We are speaking one spectacular story. But that's the end of the story. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Amen. You've got to deal with it. Allow God to deal with that sin in your life. First thing. Now, if that is taken care of, then other things can follow. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we lie. Amen? And we do not the truth. He said, but if we confess. Please listen to this and hear this very well. Every day you wake up and you find yourself alive, that is grace. You are given another opportunity to do the right thing. Amen? But some have slipped away while sleeping and they've slipped into eternity. And they are lost forever. Amen. Amen. So you need to connect all the time and make sure sin is done away from your life. It's a battle we have to fight every day, unfortunately. And that is why you need to pray every day. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. Hallelujah. When that is taken care of, then other things can follow. God doesn't have a problem blessing you. But maybe there's something in you that is stopping me. Praise the Lord. Deal with that thing and then come before God and see if God will not answer you. I'm telling you, Deal with it and see if God will not come to you. If he doesn't come immediately, you will receive an encouragement from God. An assurance in your heart that God has heard you. You may not see manifestation yet, but if you have an assurance in you that God has answered you, you will not worry anymore. I never prayed that you broke into a realm when you know that the answer has come. Even though physically you are not seeing anything, anything. I remember one time I was praying and then suddenly... A burden came on me heavily, and I began to pray. As I was praying, suddenly I broke. I just broke into joy while I was praying, and I knew that the answer had come. What I was asking for, each time I think about it, the only thing that comes from within me is that it's already done. Praise the Lord. The assurance is already there. And so I'm no longer worried anymore. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Let's do the right thing, and all that will follow. Amen. So sin, we deal with it first. Then afterwards, we're going to start dealing with those spirits that has been manifesting in our life. That is influencing us negatively. There are some people, you are being implicated not because you are cross. But maybe the person around you that you are dealing with is already under a negative influence. And then because you are close to the person, you are being implicated by what the person is carrying. Amen. Amen. It happens to people. 
The Bible says evil communication. Not just physical, the evil spiritual girls. Once you are connected to a man that is under an evil influence, that influence only that person will use because they are affect you because you are connected to the person. We are going to break free from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So these are the things we are going to break this morning. Then, by the grace of God, we are going to have ourselves anointed and then walk in the freedom and in the liberty that God has ordained for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible has made us and given us an assurance and the promise of God never fails. God is not a man that he should lie. If God has made a promise, he will bring it to pass. God, his hands are not shortened, ladies and gentlemen. He said, as the heavens break for the rain, and the snow and cause and land upon the earth and cause the earth to bud and to grow and bear fruit. Say, so shall my word be that proceed out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Whatever I've said, I'll bring it to pass. He's not a man that he should lie. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take God's word to the bank, it will not bounce. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Amen. It won't. Because it's alive and it's real, it will produce. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord is alive and active. Now, I just want your confidence in the power of God and in the word of God to be intact. And be rest assured that God is for you. He has nothing against you as long as you are connected to him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We follow our prayer this day. Amen to Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. 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 All right. The first thing we're going to do I have four prayer points I want to lead, and I want us to pray with all our hearts. Amen. But the first one we're going to pray again, we're going to ask that the mercy of God will locate us. Those areas of your life, you know you are struggling. God, see, the anger of God will not be that you do those things. His anger will be that you refuse to let him help you. That will be his anger. This is solution. You have a problem, this is solution. Now, take solution. But if you refuse solution, then God will be angry because he said, light has come into this world, but men love darkness rather than light. And that is the condemnation. Amen to Jesus. So you're going to pray this morning. Lord, I need spiritual healing. He said, if my people who are called by my name, not, not unbelievers, said my people, he's talking to Christians now. If my people who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and talk from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their man. So spiritual healing is coming your way today. God is going to heal you spirit, soul, and body. Say, Lord, I call upon you. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy upon me. All the sins and the limited God I'm indulging, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me from every unrighteousness, from every iniquity, Lord. Let your mercy prevail upon me. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let your mercy prevail on me. Let your mercy prevail on us. 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 Oh God. Ah, the devil is a I said, heal me, O Lord, and I shall heal you. He save me, and I shall be saved. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray that God will heal you. Heal your spirits. Heal your soul. And then heal your body. He said, heal me, O Lord, thank you. And I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are the Lord, for thou art my praise. Heal me, O Lord. And I will be saved. Save me, and I will be saved. Heal you me, O Lord, and I will be healed. For you are the one I pray. My Lord, you are the one. 
working and moving upon us today. God is bringing healing upon our spirit. He's bringing healing upon our soul. Bringing healing upon our body. There's a washing away of every negativity that has attached themselves to us by the spirit of the living God. This morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm going to pray. Amen. Three prayer points that we're going to the anointing session and then we pray. Anoint ourselves and then walk in the liberty that God has ordained for us. God didn't call us into bondage. He called us unto liberty. He didn't call us unto bondage, but unto liberty. Amen to Jesus. But first, you're going to pray. You're going to break free from every every spirit. I put it down this way. Mm. You're going to break free from every negative spiritual influences affecting your life by virtue of association. Because you are associated with some people who are carriers and vessels of negativity, for some reason, out of probably your own carelessness or lack of watchfulness, you are implicated. And what is following them starts following you. You're going to break free from it. You don't want to declare, I break free from every negative influence. From today, I refuse. I refuse every negative influence in my life. Every contamination of my own. I break free from it. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Spirits, praise the Lord. You have a spirit, amen. So the world is full of negative spirits and negative influences. The authority God has given to us is in our mouth. When you speak and decree a thing, it will happen. Amen to Jesus. I have given you power. Jesus said, These signs will follow them that believe. In my name, you will cast out devils, and you cast out devils not by weeping or beating. By speaking, by declaring, because authority has been given to you. Praise the Lord. The authority is there. So you're going to pray again. Every negative contamination, by virtue of my association with everybody that is influencing my life, I break free from it. Please pray. It's very important. agent of light. Just like we have agent of darkness. Now, if an agent of darkness go to a place, what they will do is to make incantation and cast a spell in that place. Because they are agents. 
Their intention is to take over that area for Satan, for their master. And you, as a child of God, you are meant to be an agent of light. So just like they are making incantation, you can pray. Hello, somebody. Amen. So when you pray, you cancel out any negativity that has been released in the atmosphere. And for, for, if for any reason you find yourself probably in a company, you know, I was working in a company by Jesus, owned by Indians. And when they were having this, they are Diwali festival. They Diwali, one of those festivals. They brought a priest into the office. And they made their ritual in the office. I said, hey, praise the Lord. And you can imagine the, the kind of spirit released in the atmosphere. And people are walking there. That means they are under the influence of the spirit in that atmosphere. Amen to Jesus. Amen. But the Bible says, as children of light, it says this light will shine in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it, cannot handle it. So, while they are busy doing their thing, we can shine the light. And listen to me, if you open your windows at night, darkness cannot shine into the, into the eyes. It's the light in the room that will shine outside. Because darkness and light cannot stay together. Amen to Jesus. So as you make that declaration right now, you are releasing the light. When, if you are, you, are, you are working in such a company, don't worry. Be the light there. Darkness cannot overpower light. Amen. But you are going to pray. Every witchcraft manipulation, incantation released in my space, in my environment, I break free from it. I refuse to be under bondage. I refuse to be under the influence. actual wizard or an actual witch and then start to make incantations. Some people manifest the spirit of witchcraft in manipulating people. They know how to put people under subjection. They bend their mind. I remember working for a man which in my opinion was trying to put me if God just opened my eyes. Everybody feared this man. Whatever the man was the same coming everybody will ruin you. Like, what, what's all this? And then I realized that there's witchcraft manipulation going on here. And then I prayed. I said, I break free from every manipulation here. I break free from it. And I decided on my own, this man, I will not fear you. You are a human being. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's how you got to relate with him. Everyone that ever walked with that man leave, they left <laughs> in a very terrible manner. But when it came to my turn, I realized that this thing is getting too much. I said, Lord, just make a way for me. Let me leave this place. Then a little opening, a little window opened, and then I took that window and then left the place. The man did not believe it. He did not believe I can leave. <laughs> he thought he can still hold me there like the way he used to hold other people down and manipulate them and, 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 and toy with their destiny. But I took that chance and then I left. I broke free from that manipulation. And for, for years, oh my God. So, in fact, to show to you that this thing was real, it was real manipulation. For years, I keep seeing the man in my dream. Oh, yeah, yeah. For years, I prayed and prayed until the last crown was broken. And then I was free. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, some people have been implicated because they are serving. Mm. 
and then they are bound by witchcraft manipulation. You are going to break it today. Amen. 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 Liberty, Jesus came to set you free. It was for freedom that Jesus came yes. to set us free. We are going to pray again. In case you find yourself under such manipulation. Amen. 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 You are going to pray. You say, I break every manipulation, every witchcraft manipulation over my life, over my finances, over my family. Telling me a story about, he said they actually watched it in a movie, but it actually happened live. And they said this woman does not give change to people. If you buy something from her, she will always tell you no change because she has done something. That they told her if you start to sell, if you ever give change to people, what they have done for her will be broken. So. She doesn't give people change. Praise the Lord. And as long as she doesn't give people change, her son, which she did the whatever for, will be prospering. So she'll be using the glory of people to. Hallelujah. Now, death, oh my goodness. There are all manner of manipulation in this world. As a child of God, you must know how to insulate yourself. That's why I ask us to pray that prayer to, to make that declaration. Anyone that blesses you is blessed. And anyone that have an evil intention against you, it will backfire. That's how it should be. Amen. 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 But as long as you are connected to God, you are the light. Darkness must not and cannot overcome light. Never. But light must know how to manifest. Amen. Amen. Say it consciously one more time. Whoever blesses me is blessed. 
whoever crosses me is crossed. Whenever I go to, whenever I go to, whatever I do, don't come out of here. sponsored by the spirit manipulated you use your lust against you and then add more fire to it so that you have this overwhelming desire hallelujah i'm telling you most people that are addicted once you cast out that spirit from them that desire does die so that means that desire they had before was not coming from them it's coming from the spirit praise the lord you will cast out devils, even from yourself. I'm not saying you are possessed, but they can be attached to you. Amen? Amen. Every action comes from a thought. And Satan whisper thoughts in your mind all the time. People that commit suicide, the suicide first came as a thought in their mind. If they had cast out that spirit, that thought would have died. And they would not have done what they did. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to speak right now against every spirit that is trying to control you. Amen? Amen. That is whispering negativity into your ears. Causing you to make wrong decisions. Take wrong action. Take wrong steps. Everything starts with a thought. So you're going to declare, I cast out every negative spirit. Spirit of confusion. Spirit of immorality. Spirit of death. Things that be not as though they were. You are going to call forth things into your life. Amen? You can call forth helpers. You can call forth positivity into your life. That is why your mouth is your gateway to having the things you need in life. The Bible says, by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of the Lord. So that the things which we see did not happen by physical things. The words are invisible, but they have physical effect. Your words are invisible, but they have physical effect. You can call forth blessings into your life. Amen. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed when I go out. Everywhere I talk to, things are happening for me. All things are working together for my good. Everywhere I go to, positivity. Everywhere I enter, victory. This should be the things you should be eaten by your life. I call forth favor into my life. I call for the blessing. I call for the helpers. I call for the people. I open your mouth and declare over your life in the name of Jesus. You will have what you say. 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 You will have what you say.
Lord, I'm going to anoint myself. Say that to Jesus. Let's have the oil. I'm going to light up here.